Hello and welcome to my video series on Harnmaster Game System for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. I've put links to both Foundry Virtual Tabletop and the Harnmaster Game System for Foundry in the description below the video. In this video I'm going to go over the combat tab in the character sheet. Not combat itself, that's a separate video, just the combat tab since there's a lot to go over here. At the top of the page is the at, the, at a glance combat stats uh, that you need. Your fatigue, your initiative, uh, ability to roll a dodge, uh, your rolling for shock, stumble, and fumble. Uh, these are the things that you will often need. They're right here at the top. Below that is your main combat section. These are your weapons and your shield and your missile weapons. Notice that there is nowhere here to add a weapon. That's done over in the gear tab, which I went over in a previous video. This section only shows the equipped weapons. Uh, if you unequip a weapon, it will disappear from here. To equip a weapon requires an action in Harnmaster, and it requires an action here too. If you go to the gear tab and press the equip button like this, then you've now equipped your weapon. Notice that only weapons and armor actually have equip buttons. Now when we return to the combat section, you'll see that the weapons we just equipped, which was the short bow and the arrow, are now visible. If a weapon isn't equipped, that means you can't use it to initiate an attack, counter strike, block, or to do a DTA, a Defender Tactical Advantage attack. Likewise, if a weapon is in a container, which I also covered in the gear video, you can't use it for an attack or defense. If you enable the optional rule for weapon damage, and I'll go over these optional rules in the GM video, and your weapon breaks, then it will be automatically unequipped for you. So if you want to use the enhanced combat routines to initiate an attack, and trust me, you do, you do so by pressing the weapon. Uh, and if you want to do the individual roles, perhaps the GM has some extra house rules or something, then you can press the icons here uh, to roll the AML, the DML, or uh, the various aspects of damage. So maybe we want to roll edge damage here. Uh, and we're going to do five points of damage. Okay. Missile weapons are handled in the same way. Now notice that I have the bow set up as a missile weapon, a melee weapon, and the arrow is the missile weapon. What I'm doing is allowing the system to track arrow quantity. Now having the short bow set up as melee seems a little odd. That's actually covered in the rules. Uh, they do go through and say that the blunt aspect uh, for the short bows is if you were to hit someone over the head with the bow. Uh, what you want, generally want to do is you want to uh, shoot them with an arrow. So what you want to do is, uh, in the gear tab, you are dragging in the short bow. And you'll notice that it has the associated skill of bow. Uh, you've got one bow, and you know this is the weight of the bow, or the, the quality of the bow. Here's the weight of the bow. And here's the uh, aspect if you were to use it as a stick and hit someone over the head. What I've done is set up arrow short bow as a missile weapon. And if we look here, I've got the quantity. Well, let's change that to 12. You're always carrying 12. Uh, you set a weight of 0 0.04, and you still associate the skill of bow with the arrow. All right. Now, when we go back to the combat section, and I initiate an enhanced combat with the arrow, not with the short bow, Watch here. I've enabled a uh, optional uh, configuration to track missile quantity. So I'm going to initiate the attack here. Move this off to the side. We have 12. Uh, we are going to do a attack. Now we have 11 arrows. So we have it set up so that it automatically tracks your uh, missile quantity. If you run out of ammo, you can't fire your bow. Next here is injuries. Uh, injuries can be the result of the injury roll above, 
or they can come from as part of the enhanced combat routines. You can of course go in and edit an injury, uh, giving it a healing, you know, this goes down from two down to one, uh, or you can get rid of it completely uh, here. Uh, and let's just go ahead and roll up a new injury with the injury roll. Uh, this is going to be a blunt trauma uh, for five points, and we'll find out where it hits. And uh, we see here that it was a right shoulder injury, and uh, the rules actually pull up all the color text around the, the injuries. Uh, this is a right shoulder fracture, and it does record that it was an aspect blunt, so that that way when you're going back and doing your uh, uh, healing, you've got all the information you need. Okay, last section is this armor location section. This is actually more of a combined hit location and armor table. Uh, again, you can't add armor here. Uh, well, actually, if you're a GM in a hurry, you can go in and hit add. But if your a character has any armor uh, worn at all or equipped at all, then what you entered in here isn't going to count. So. I kind of want to discount being able to add in armor, uh, uh, armor in this way. What you want to do is go into the gear section and you want to go to the compendium and we're going to pull up standard armor and you want to take and you want to drag the uh, armor from the compendium onto your character. So this guy is going to have some... Uh, leather uh, calf boots, those look stylish, uh, and some uh, a leather surcoat perhaps, and he already had in here uh, a plate half helm and a cloth cap. I'm just, for the fun of it, I'm going to remove the cloth cap. Boom. Alright, now let's go back over here to combat. You see that we have the, uh, the, the, the skull has cloth and plate, uh, left shoulder has leather, leather, bunch of leather. Uh, this guy likes leather. Uh, this all adds up automatically and if we want to uh, add in uh, more armor we can drag it in cloth cap. Now he's got two cloth caps on here uh, and hmm. let's drag that cloth hood on there. There we are. So neck has cloth hood and it's got protection of one as you can see. Um, so this is actually a combined hit and armor table. If you were to go in here and look at, say, the skull, uh, up here in the basic armor settings, it's taking care of all of this for you. It's got the cloth cap, it's got the plate half helm, uh, and it is taking the, uh, uh, adding up all your protection for the various types of damage you can take. Down here is the hit probability weights. So this is taking the, uh, the, the hit locations and it is using the built-in Foundry VTT uh, rollable tables. They don't work off of ranges, so you don't type in 1 to 5. You instead give it a weight, uh, and, and if all of the weights add up to 100, they're essentially percentages. What the author has done here is taken all the percentages and multiplied them by 10. So if you look at the table for uh, uh, hit locations, you would see that the skull has a 5%. It's 1 to 5 uh, chance of being hit. Uh, and the weighting here is 50. That way, if you choose to do the uh, uh, left ear, model the left ear as a targetable or as a target location, uh, which has half of a one half of one percent chance of uh, getting hit. You can actually just model that by putting in a weight of five. So he's taken all the probabilities, multiplied by multiplied them by ten to give you room to sneak stuff in uh, as you want, uh, without having without actually breaking the rest of the the uh, uh, armor that he's already created for you. So you've got all of the standard armor in uh, from the book uh, in here. Uh, it's quite a lot. Uh, male, 
plate. Uh, let's put some plate clouds in there. I don't know what those are. Uh, and yeah. Uh, so that is, oh, what I also wanted to do uh, is show you here, in addition, so for this uh, location, you've got the hit location settings, whether it's a fumble risk, a stumble risk, an amputate risk, and what kind of an injury you get at the various intervals for uh, impact. Now, if you set this to one of the standard locations, uh, it's going to, and that's why it wasn't updating before, because it wasn't standard location. Uh, standard location, it is picking it up here. Uh, and if you set it to custom, you can go in and change things. So maybe you don't want a K4, you want to downgrade that to a G4, and you're all set. Boom. So that is the combat tab in a, sh a nutshell. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. hope it was helpful. If you like it, please hit the like button. I'm not monetizing this in any way. I just like to get the likes. Uh, so thank you very much. Have a good day.